Actually, the patriarchy doesn't have to try to keep women down. It's the nature of the patriarchal system. It's also the nature of the racist system to make sure that wh white people are elevated over people of color and able-bodied people over people with disabilities and heterosexual people over LGBTQI people. Those are just facts. There's a dominant group in the culture, in Western culture, and it's influencing things globally. And that group is white, heterosexual males from Western Europe, Europe and North America who are able-bodied and heterosexual. That's a fact. It's a closed group and they don't like people coming in from the outside. No, it's not just a matter of money. If it were just a matter of money, they would be marketing to all of us because most of us are a much bigger demographic than they are. Why do self-proclaimed gamers get to be the only definition of gaming? Gaming has gone from a time when people had to know about computers in order to be able to play games and people who were encouraged in technology and computational sciences were white males. Now that games have become multi-platform, anybody can afford them. Computers are a lot less expensive now. Other platforms are even cheaper. And it's not just Bejeweled and Solitaire that so-called women are playing. And it's not just women. It's people of color. It's elders. Um, gaming has diversified because the platforms have diversified. And we get to call ourselves gamers too. And no, it's not just Bejeweled and Solitaire. There's a lot of games out there that we are playing. And I don't know why the people who are the geeks who had the expensive computers back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s get to define what a gamer is. It is absolutely not true that designers have to change, have to change the key demographic in order to change the status quo. That's absolutely not true. You play Minecraft. I play Minecraft. Minecraft is genderless. There are no sexes amongst the animals or even amongst the mobs, although some are called ender men and pig men. You can, breed, you can breed homosexually. Minecraft is one of the most successful games ever created and it just sold for $2.6 billion. And it's being sold cross-platform so that anybody can play it on any kind of a device. The reason it's a closed feedback loop is because these men sit at desks 16 hours a day only talking to each other and people like them or people who are willing to hold them as the high standard so that they can get into the industry. Also, women, people of color, LGBT people, low-income people are not encouraged to enter technology, are not encouraged to enter 3D graphic designs and coding. We're not, we're not included in that. It's very difficult for us to get into the industry even by going to school. We're even shut out there. We're stigmatized and isolated and set aside as some sorts of freaks. Did it ever occur to you the demographics of the critics? Who were the critics that were criticizing gay characters in a game? Were they gay people? I'm guessing that they weren't. And I hear all the time how I just heard a conservative atheists say that there should be no gay pride because gays have nothing to be proud of. Just getting up in the morning and staying alive is something to be proud of, sir. So just the fact that you threw in the phrase politically correct tells me something about you because that's a catchphrase that's used by people who want an excuse not to show good manners and common courtesy and respect for people who are different than they are. This isn't about political correctness. This is about inclusion. Now, I'm sure it was a big threat to the gaming industry, to the gamer reviewers. I bet it was a big threat and considered throwing a monkey wrench into the works to have a gay character. That happened on television too, if you'll remember. It's happened in every medium. Motion pictures, every medium. When something other than the dominant expected heterosexual nuclear family is introduced into a new medium, it's not received positively. In fact, it can be very detrimental. I would like you to see Vita Russo's 
book, The Celluloid Closet, which is the history of LGBTQI people in film, the way they're depicted, all the way up to uh, directors, all the way up to taking control of the medium ourselves and creating our own content and what the difference is. It's not about tokenism. It's not about political correctness. What it's about is inclusion. We are part of the world and we will be represented because we're tired of spending our money on things that don't include us. Now, I've been in... You have a business associate and I was on his uh, creative server and the epithets against LGBTQI people in TeamSpeak and in in-game chat were horrible. In a game like Minecraft, where everybody should be included, I can't read the graphic that you've got on the screen about this Vivian James, and I don't know anything about Vivian James, and I don't know anything about this discussion. And I know that your presentation of this is one-sided because you are using the word feminist with contempt in your voice and in your argument. I do know this. Feminism is not an army. Feminism is the concept that human beings are equal despite sex and gender differences and deserve respect and deserve fair treatment and equal opportunity. That's all feminism is. Now, every movement, uh, African American, um, Mexican American, uh, Jewish American, every movement on this continent, labor, LGBTQI, every disabilities every movement on this continent that is working for inclusion in the ma in the major dominant culture every group has discussions and disagreements and if you want to call it infighting fine but what it is is trying to articulate what our needs are and not all of our needs are are the same we're not all the same we're individuals with individual needs, trying to work together collectively to produce something. Now, I can't read that graphic, and I don't know what you're talking about, but I can tell you this much. I've been a feminist since I was 17 years old, sir, and I'm 59 years old now. And no, we don't all agree. And I've studied women's history. I mean, way past Seneca Falls. Uh, I should not even mention that because nobody in your audience is going to know what I'm talking about. But way before the founding of the United States of America, what feminist principles were throughout history and culture, in multiple cultures, not just white Western, in Africa, in Asia, in Native America, in Latin America, in Polynesia. No, we don't all agree because all of our needs aren't the same and all of our goals aren't the same because we're individuals. That's not an excuse for you to condemn feminism because feminism, all it means is equality between genders and sexes. That's all it means. I don't care how you're caring to interpret it because obviously you care to condemn it because you believe some sort of rhetoric and propaganda you've been told, but you haven't actually studied feminism or you wouldn't have leapt to these unfounded and prejudiced conclusions. There's hatred against people who are not considered to be the status quo. Again, an associate of yours ran a creative server and the head of his build team made a joke about hanging a black man from a tree. The epithets against LGBTQI people, the put downs for people being female. I heard that same build team leader tell a little kid, the little kid was playing and said, I have to leave now, my parents need me to get off the computer, and instead of saying, okay, bro, see you next time, that build team leader shamed that boy, that little boy, in front of other boys, and called him a loser and a quitter. Those are the kinds of role models. So that kid was too young. Oh, and he was also a person of color from the Middle East. It's the people who don't fit in. Have you ever heard the videos where people call somebody lame or blind or crazy or brain dead? The people who don't fit in, the people with disabilities, retarded, have you heard that? Those are considered acceptable things to say. Jokes about, oh, I got raped by a spider. You don't know what rape is. It's no joke. Don't try to soft pedal rape by um, dismissing it as just some sort of a joke that happens to people with a virtual spider in a game. Yeah, there's a lot of hate in gaming. 
The feminists are pointing out the hatred toward women. I've been pointing out the hatred toward everybody who isn't white, male, heterosexual, Western, and privileged. That's no excuse for threatening to rape. That's no excuse for threatening to beat people's mothers, to come to the people's houses and mess up their families. That's no excuse for hate. And I mean real hate, real threats. I was cyber bullied and cyber stalked. I couldn't go to any Minecraft servers publicly if I made videos about them because this little troop of fanboys would hunt me down and they'd grief and they'd set traps and they'd show up in racist skins at my builds. Fortunately, other people saw them and they'd make terrible comments about LGBTQI people in TeamSpeak and in in-game chat. Yeah, there's a lot of hate. And it needs to change, and I'm glad the women are speaking up, and I think it's time for everybody else to speak up, too. Why are you calling Sarkeesian a terrible feminist? She's been producing those videos for a long time now. I've watched them when I had another YouTube channel. Why is she suddenly terrible? You don't explain that. She's just terrible because she's feminist. She's terrible because you believe the bullpucky being spread by Gamergate? Really? Really? Have you ever sat down and really watched her videos? It's an academic analysis of the tropes and roles and presentations of females in gaming. And she's spot on with most of it. She didn't start all this vitriol. She didn't start all this hate. She didn't start any of this, sir. This was all directed at her for having the nerve to do an analysis. It makes as much sense. Maybe you don't understand academic analysis. It makes as much sense for a bunch of impressionist poets to begin sending death threats to a poetry critic, an academic who studies the genre, because of things that she points out in expressionist poetry. She doesn't have to write expressionist poetry in order to be able to analyze it. I don't have to be able to produce a movie in order to be able to do a review of it. I don't have to grow a cow in order to be able to do a food critic review of a Sizzler Steakhouse. For some reason, you have it in your head that she has no right to speak because she's from outside the industry. Some of the freshest voices in conversations about media, literature, the ways we learn are from outside those industries. And it's a good thing because if those industries can't hold up under scrutiny from outside sources, they have nothing viable to say, not to the real world. They're just blowing smoke and tooting their own horns, and they have no relevancy. And I'll tell you what, sir, gaming is relevant. It's teaching whole generations of kids how to comport themselves. And it's people like you who model for them how to comport themselves. And there's a whole lot of channels I'm not subscribed to because those players are racist, sexist, homophobic, show up to play in front of children drunk and high, make jokes about drug use, give recipes for how to make alcoholic drinks. They're vulgar and they're vile and they're teaching these kids terrible things and those kids eat it with a spoon and think, oh, that's how to be a man. I'm subbed to your channel because you're different than that. And I need you to stay that way. I need you to be a welcoming place for little kids of color and LGBTQI kids and kids with disabilities and little girls. That's feminism. Pink ponies and rainbows have nothing to do with women. Those are stereotypes that are being pushed on us. Do you know that as much as 10, 15 years ago, toys weren't pink, purple, rainbow ponies? Do you know that? That little girls' toys were much more inclusive? Now you can't walk into a Walmart aisle without seeing a segregated section of Pepto-Bismol crap for girls stuff that's passive, stuff that's just training them to be interested in physical appearance and being decorative. And the boys' toys? Camouflage for the professional army. But they're active toys. They get to play sports and stuff like that. Girls' toys are cheap, pink, plastic, decorative garbage. And it didn't used to be that way. In my lifetime, I myself had a sheet metal Tonka truck dump truck when I was a little girl. I know how to throw a football, sir. I know how to curl my hair and do my makeup. I choose not to do that. 
but the segregation of sexes in the toy aisle is disgusting. And not all little boys care about shooters. And maybe a lot of little boys would care about other stuff. Like, oh, I don't know, Kerbal Space Program, Mr. Science Astronomy Guy? There are ways to engage and challenge kids that have nothing to do with stereotypes about gender. That's why I love Minecraft. Nothing to do with stereotypes about gender. We don't know what's natural to kids because we force them to be a certain way and we segregate them by sex. That is feminism. It impacts you too. Your choices are limited by the fact that you're male. What you're allowed to do is limited by the fact that you are male. I'm sorry, the developers have to be women, which means that the developing has to be done by women who are trained in technology, in computer sciences and tech and code writing and animation and musical composition and so on. Now, it's very expensive to go to school in the United States of America and people are burdened with debt. And when they get out of school, they're just as likely to have to flip hamburgers as the guy who never even spent one day in a classroom and burdened with hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. And when a woman's going to invest that kind of money into going to school, she wants a profession where when she gets out, she won't be rejected the minute she knocks on the door and asks for a job. Just like it's been true in the newspaper industry, the film industry, television, any other mass communication medium you can mention. And gaming is the same way. It is harder than hell to break into the industry. So before a woman even goes to school, she's discouraged from participating. One of the biggest frustrations in my life is the fact that there aren't women game developers, or there aren't enough of them that were not represented, or LGBTQI, or people of color, or people with disabilities. The industry is shutting out brilliant minds and discouraging them from ever participating. And you say the industry doesn't know what women want. Well, that's why. And that's what patriarchy is. Get a clue. 70% of females who game have impersonated males in order to play on a fair and level playing field. My own character skin is gender neutral. And my, my first Minecraft account, not Granny Gamer 1, she's my second one, but my first Minecraft player account has a gender, gender neutral name. So that if I ever get any kind of notice, community public notice, I can still go on public servers and be able to play without anybody knowing who I am. Especially not knowing that I'm female. Because they will gang up on you, they will camp at spawn, they will not give you a chance. I know this from personal experience. We don't have a level playing field. The minute they know you're female, the minute they know you're LGBTQI, the minute they know you're a person of color. You can look at it within the Minecraft community. You can look at those who have been playing the game since alpha days. Now, which ones are popular and which ones are not? Which ones have big YouTube channels and have a big impact on the game and which ones don't? Some of these people have been playing longer than you have. Minecraft, I'm talking. Longer than you have, longer than Zuma. Longer than Doc. Or at least as long. And know at least as much about the game mechanics, the mob AI, tactics, everything about the game. And they're still hovering at hundreds of subscribers, not thousands, not millions, because it is a feedback loop. You guys take care of each other, and there's always an excuse. Oh, you might want like let one of us in as a token now and then, if we comport to your standards, and if we all agree that your way of doing things is the right way of doing them. But the bottom line is, it's a feedback loop, and, and you're not letting us in. And it's not because we can't play. It's not because we're not as good as you are. How many people of color on, are on Hermitcraft, sir? How many people of color on Minecraft? We're not spewing, it's bile, bile. It's the juices in the stomach that start digesting food, it's bile. Sometimes when your stomach is empty and you're nauseous and you throw up, you throw up bile. It's very painful, it's acidic, it burns your mouth, it tastes awful, it smells horrible, okay? It's bile not vile. Sarkeesian is not spewing vile at gaming. She's doing a rational, level-headed analysis of where genders and sexes fit into gaming. And I really think you need to listen to her and to people like her who are doing such analyses. Not with a closed mind and not assuming that she's spewing hate. She did an academic analysis of the gaming industry and the medium. It's just like looking at literature and finding the same 
messages in it and magazines and television shows and movies, you'll see the same messages directed at women and directed at men about what the roles of women are and what the roles of men are, which are very oppressive. And again, as far as, oh, they're fighting amongst themselves, white men never fight amongst themselves about anything. You're all a cohesive group and you never disagree on anything and you never throw tantrums and you never make rape threats and you never try to dox people, right? No, you just do it to the rest of us. Not to each other, right? Remember Notch? He said, I saw in my Twitter thing, uh, the copy of his tweet that said, he's not used to being hated and so he's getting out of Mojang. Isn't he lucky that he's not used to being hated? I lost a lot of respect for him for writing that tweet. Isn't he lucky that he doesn't know that much about being hated? And the minute he did, he took his ball and went home to the tune of 2.6 bill. We do want more women in the gaming industry and the gaming industry is full of some really remedially thinking people these are people who played games as children and continue to play games and put in 16 18 hour days they're young primarily single males who don't have household responsibilities to take care of don't have children to take care of don't have anything to do except sit there in the office and put in 80 hour work weeks and I've already discussed why women aren't going in for the training why would you spend that kind of money on an education just to walk in the door and if you are hired which is highly unlikely but if you are hired do you remember Jackie Robinson the baseball player the crap he had to put up with for being in the major leagues the death threats the racial slurs you know he almost lost his mind over that but he knew he was the first and he had to stand there and take it and play that game like it didn't matter like it wasn't hurting him from the inside out like he wasn't afraid of what was going to happen to his family and what the impact was going to be on his kids you have no idea what he sacrificed take it up there and swing it back you have no clue and that's what you're not realizing women are having to do to break into industries where we are not welcome. You don't call yourself a feminist because you have your own subconscious biases and this is not your battle to fight. Equality for all human beings without ridiculous prejudicial stereotypes and sex roles is not your battle to fight. I really don't think that's true. And I really don't think you have a working definition of feminism. And I really don't think you have studied feminism enough to be able to have an informed opinion. These are not subconscious biases, sir. You are consciously biased. You have predetermined a conclusion based on faulty evidence. You wouldn't know a feminist if she came up and bit you in the butt. What you're reacting to is a stereotype. Feminists are, or if you want to call it their own agenda that they're trying to advance, that human beings are all equal, that's their agenda? Okay, fine. I'm on board with that. Now, my question to you, sir, is why aren't you? How does this threaten you in any way? To my viewers, I'd hug you, but my arms don't.